the great mayor of San Francisco, the next lieutenant governor, and our own president. It's great to be out here. Thank you, each and every one of you, for taking the time to be here. It is great to be in Southern California, and it is great to be with President, former President of the United States, Bill Clinton, and the future governor of California, Jerry Brown. I think all of you can agree with me. All of you will agree with this. What makes California a special place what makes Southern California a special place is we're one of the most diverse regions in the most diverse state in the world's most diverse democracy. That's California. And, and I'm one of those guys that doesn't just believe in tolerating our diversity, but celebrating it each and every day. That's when we're at our best. California, state of dreamers, of doers, of entrepreneurs, a state that's prided itself on being on the leading and cutting edge of new ideas. California, the birthplace of life science and biotechnology. The home to more Nobel laureates, more scientists, more engineers than any other part of our nation. And proudly home to three of the top six universities in the world, California. Thank you, UC. We all know what the challenges are. You know them well. And any of you that had to pay tuition last year know it very well. And you know we need to move in a new direction. You know that we need real change in California. And, and I, I don't know about you, but I don't think we can afford a sequel to the Schwarzenegger years. We need bold leadership. We need courage. We need conviction. We need people that know how to get the job done. People like Jerry Brown. Now, I'm going to introduce Governor Brown in a second, but I can't help myself standing here with President Clinton. I have to just say a few words. You know, it's pretty amazing, yet you're watching all these talk shows, those networks, won't mention which, three letters. And I, and I, I just, I'm one of these guys that's open argument, interested in evidence, and I just want the facts, and I could be persuaded. I'm not an ideologue. And you look at the facts. You look when President Clinton took office after 12 years, Ronald Reagan left us with a $155 billion budget deficit, and then George Bush Sr. left us with a $290 billion deficit. We saw the national debt quadruple during those years from $1 trillion to $4 trillion. And he came in with a tow truck to get us out of that ditch. What he did in those eight years, you all know intimately, 22.7 million jobs. That's 50% more than the 12 years that preceded it. He not only created more jobs, he created more small business startups than any time in our history. And he did something that's important to me as a Democrat and I hope to every Democrat out here. 
He dealt with the most substantive and challenging issue of our time, and that's the issue of income inequality. You know, during the Clinton years, this is important, not many people know this. During the Clinton years, the bottom 20% showed an increase in the percentage of income above what the top 20% had shown. The first time we saw a reduction in that income inequality. That was the first time since the 70s, and it's the last time we've seen that. And as the president will remind you, we had more billionaires and millionaires because no one should complain about other people's success. And the president's right to always remind us of that. We made real progress as a country. Income went up. People weren't just working harder and making less, they were working harder and doing better. And just briefly, and I'm gonna close because I know these are the stars of the night. What happened? After he left, a $230 billion surplus. What happened after he paid down the national debt by over $600 billion and put us on track to get rid of that national debt in four or five years? Well, you know what happened. We had eight years of trickle-down economics and that failed economic theory of the Republicans, the same ones being espoused by Meg Whitman, and they doubled the debt again, and they left us with a $1.2 trillion budget deficit. And now we got a president that's doing what? Backing up the tow truck to get us out of that ditch. It's deja vu all over again. So I'm proud to be up here with the only guy that justifiably can talk about the economy, to the one guy who understands deficits and understands math. And there's someone else, and let me introduce them, that understands math, that understands dollars and cents, and has a lot of common sense at a time when we need common sense in California. Someone, again, who's not an ideologue, that was the mayor of Oakland, California, at a time when we got some of you here, at a time when no one believed that Oakland could be governed or Oakland could be turned around. When people in Oakland, even the biggest boosters of Oakland, started questioning themselves and whether or not the best days at Oakland were behind us. And Jerry Brown came in. It didn't take him four years. It didn't even take him 40 months. I was there. I was on the other side of the bay in a small city called San Francisco. I saw it firsthand. Overnight, people started to believe again. Overnight, people started focusing on what was right with the city of Oakland. Overnight, people said, you know what? I think I'm gonna look again. I think I'm gonna start making investments. And we saw job creation and crime reduction, the likes of which we haven't seen in Oakland in years because of Jerry Brown's leadership. I will conclude with this. I said this in an event we were just at. We are lucky in this state. Jerry Brown has nothing to prove to anybody. He was twice governor of our great state. He has had every key office. He has accomplished more than folks like me could ever dream of. But he's willing to take the years when he could be writing a memoir, and instead, he's gonna be writing the future of our great state. And we are lucky that we have him. Ladies and gentlemen, the next governor of the great state of California, Jerry Brown. Thank you.